Da er vi tilbake ved TV-bordet vårt, og sammen med Sverre og meg i dag så har vi eh, en ire og en eh, latvisk amerikaner, eller litt taiwisk amerikaner, litt uh, usikker på det, men det skal vi få mer klarhet i. Hvorfor sitter vi her med en herre med utlendinger, lurer du kanskje på nå? Jo, fordi at på uh, YouTube-kanalen vår så skal vi legge ut Poker NM og Poker North Masters og Cash Game på med engelske kommentatorer. Det blir veldig stas. Og vi har jo masse vi skal spørre disse guttene her, men først, Philip Baker og Phil. Phil is welcome. Right. And Jason Galatza. You got it right. Very good. Welcome. Thank you. You're commentating Norwegian poker players. Norwegian Championship, North Masters, and Cash King. That is correct. When are you going to... Are you guys ever sleeping? Or are you working all day? Sleep is when you're dead. We don't need to sleep. We're here for uh, commentating for some exciting poker. Uh, the Norwegians are all very exciting players. I've gotten to know quite many of them throughout the years as a reporter and commentator. And uh, yeah, absolutely looking forward to uh, the high stakes cash games. And of course, uh, for the first time, providing English commentating for some of the Norwegian only events, uh, including today's Heads Up. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I've been involved with the, the championship over the last decade or so, and I'm so excited to finally get an English commentary on it. We're going to bring the vibrancy, we're going to bring the excitement. Like Everybody who's ever been to a Norwegian championship knows how exciting it is, how, how the, the atmosphere is electric in the place, and for the first time we're going to be able to bring that to uh, English-speaking uh, people. Nice. I'm going to try to keep this a little bit in English so you guys understand as well, but I, and, and you can confirm my, my hypothesis here, but I, I think that an international audience will be really excited about seeing Norwegians playing with whole cards in the, this kind of situation, because you got to remember, Scandinavian poker has always had a reputation, especially in the US, but also around Europe. We've been known as the hyper-aggressive Scandis for a long, long time. As of late, we're getting a more, a more well-theorized image out in the world but I think there's a lot of players out there who's really curious about seeing how these top Norwegian players perform seeing their whole cards and seeing them in a situation where where you could actually get a grasp on the on the extreme amount of good Norwegian poker players what do you think I, I fully agree and a lot of this was brought to the stage recently last year at the WSOP when Espen Jorstad uh, won the main event it proved that Norwegian players are now among the uh, top players in the world. Uh, you have guys like Juan Kite and uh, guys that are very aggressive, but they know what they're doing. So aggressive poker is good poker. Hyper aggressive poker can be good poker if you know exactly what you're doing. So I don't think the aggressiveness has gone away from the Norwegian players. At the same time, it's a more rational aggression, especially amongst the, uh, the top notch players. Well, Phil's seen the players outside of the tables as well, so I think he wants to hold on to the aggression a little bit, or I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, absolutely, and and you can see over the last uh, over the last several years in 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 Dublin, I, I've seen a great progression within the play, from from every aspect of it. In 2012, when I met all the players, it was fun. It was fun on the tables. I saw a style of play. It was a, a, a very aggressive way of playing poker, but even. In the last couple of years, playing a couple of games myself, I can see the big difference in a lot of the players and a lot of the techniques that they bring now to the table. So, uh, yep, yeah, a high-end, high-end game definitely. We're, we're going to be checking out this week. But it is interesting, though. I mean, the way we've been taught how to play poker in Norway is it's really been in, in local clubs in smaller type situations. But but the mentors are so extremely strong. I mean, I remember when I started playing poker back in the days, we're talking about European champions, we're talking about WSOP bracelets, and, and they're playing these 30 to 50 buck tournaments where, where everyone can participate. And I think that's part of the reason why the general field is so strong. Because I noticed that if you play a tournament here in Norwegian Championship, as opposed to sitting down in a poker festival with equal buy-ins. The level of play among the poor players on the table is so, so, so much higher. Yeah, no, no, no you're right in what you're saying. It's, 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 it's a case where we, we have, players will gain a lot of experience when they're playing outside of their norm. When you're playing in the club, your, your experience is going to be a lot less relevant to when you go out to a bigger festival, you're going to gain so much more experience. Back in the day when I played a lot of poker, I remember I used to play in the club a lot of the time. The minute I started playing this, in the slightly bigger festivals, my experience, what I was doing was so much better and how I improved 
uh, improve dramatically over a shorter period of time for that. And, and imagine, I mean, we, a lot of these guys get the advantage of getting to play these kind of level tournaments by just putting in yeah, 20 to $50, for example. And it's not usually like that around the world, is it? No, it definitely is not. Uh, <laughs> but in certain parts of the world, it certainly is. But it's not like a normal thing. Like if you, Especially if you go to the United States, you need to play the higher buy-in tournaments in order to gain that level of experience that you can gain in places like Norway and places like Lithuania, where I live, that you can gain in the 100, 200 buy-in tournaments. And in some cases, as in you just mentioned the Norway and the clubs, for even less. Uh, but yeah, when I'm playing uh, locally in Lithuania, it's similar. It'll be a 100 to 200 buy-in tournament, but I'm looking around and the talent there, there's WSOP bracelet winners playing. You know, it, They're coming out to, to compete, but they're coming out to have fun, and that's how you gain your experience. But this is not only uh, for Norwegians. I mean, we have the Norwegian Championships, which is only for Norwegian citizens, but we also have the North Masters and we have the cash tables that you're going to do commenting on as well. What is going to be uh, your take on the North Masters? Because that's a new thing for us Norwegians, at least. It's a new concept. Uh, how has it been so far this week? Well, I think it's it's been slow to start. I think at the for the first two flights, but they're expecting big numbers today and tomorrow. I think there's four flights still remaining. There's two today, and I think two tomorrow. And there's lots of satellites as well. It's a it's a half a million guarantee, a big buy-in. It's a for for compared to if some of the Norwegian Championship events, it's an eight hundred um, euro buy-in. But um, it's something that's a bit different. And the one thing that Norwegian Championship, I think they're always trying to do different things for different events. And if it proves to be a big success, I'm sure it'll be kept in the in the plan for the future. Because it's become a huge festival, as you said. Monster. I mean, it's even this 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 year. Uh, I think we've added about three to four days of poker play. Yeah. Um, I know the mixed games were very popular the first two days. We've had a couple of guys come in from Lithuania just to play the mixed games. So those guys are going to be here for the duration. So i um, always trying to appeal to every different type of player. And I know the mixed games were very popular. The PLO for me, the PLO has been the biggest expansion in the Norwegian Championship. So many people love to play PLO compared to a lot of other festivals. So, yeah. <clears throat> so I, do, I do believe it's, if, if it works, it's gonna be part of. Yeah. But they're always trying to change, they're always trying to appeal to get, get the feedback from the players and see what they want. And I think the mixed games, have they, they have Jason, they've been very, uh, very popular this week? They've been very popular and the talent has been absolutely Norwegian players like uh, Lechnes uh, was, uh, on a few final tables, he won an event. Uh, you were speaking about Lithuania. Danis uh, Antonaitis yesterday won the eight game for more than 11,000. So imagine an eight game tournament paying more than five figures in Europe. I mean, that's unheard of outside of maybe the WSOP Europe. So players are coming. They want to play the mixed games. And uh, some of those mixed game players will stay. They also play uh, Hold'em. The Lithuanians will stay, for example. Uh, but there are players coming from England, coming from Sweden, coming from Estonia, coming from Finland, coming from just about every corner of Europe. I haven't seen yet any other Americans here yet, but I imagine that we'll see a few flying out from the States as well. It's been a tremendous vibe, a tremendous feel, and it's only going to get bigger from here with the amount of people still yet to come. And, and, we're, and we're situated in this very central piece of Europe so people can come from everywhere and anywhere and as you say Jason they do because I met the uh, people from Finland Denmark Slovakians uh, when you sit around the table you talk to the whole of Europe yes to say that that's great fun and, isn't it? and I also uh, and as you said there's there's five championship events but every other event is open to everybody yeah and there's a lot of locals a lot of excitement in the locals and as you say we are in the middle of Europe here we've got a lot of I know the club here I know the casino here has a lot of Austrians that come in over the yeah. border all the time this is great for the Norwegian players as well we're bringing a whole new demographic to the table uh, they, the guys have been over a decade in, in Dublin now they're going to experience a totally different player and um, it'll bring their experiences even more. So they are getting that kind of worldly feel from the Norwegian Championship, wherever it's played. And I, I, would, I would like to ask you, Sider, uh, compared to Dublin, as Phil is saying here, that you can now experience to play with so many different nationalities, will that be good for the Norwegian poker players <laughs> as well? Um, I, I think I, that... I mean, if you want I to think train that a and be, become no, a better poker player. I think that a broad representation is probably good for good players because you get I, I mean you find that say Dublin 
my impression is that in Dublin you gathered gathered a lot of the top Irish players that came over to the championship. The level of play was very strong in what they offered to to the mix. Uh, I do believe that you get a little bit more of a mixed bag here because it's more it's more center oriented. It covers Vienna. It covers uh, Bratislava. It 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 brings. A wider array of poker players, but but I am curious to hear when it comes to that Dublin crowd, how much the poker players of Dublin miss this Norwegian Championship, Phil? Because you know a little bit about this, don't you? It's, they, it's it's the talk of the it's been the talk of uh, the Irish poker scene, and even some of the UK guys who used to come over as well. It's the, the, the Norwegian Championship was the highlight of of poker for a lot of the guys over the last decade, and. Um, they, and, and as much as people like to win money or win tournaments, they will miss. They miss the crack of it. They miss the atmosphere, the whole thing. And it's it's been a huge talk. And hopefully, we'll get back to Dublin one day. Yeah, we're gonna wrap it up. But uh, Jason, I know that you're also gonna be commentating uh, cash tables. Yes. So uh, hopefully, Phil will join me for some of that. But uh, yes, we'll have a variety of guests and some big cash games going on. I believe tonight will be with stakes twenty five fifty. That's yet to be confirmed, but just to give you an idea of how big the games, that I don't know yet either. Yeah. Um, but I assume it's going to be a mix of Hold'em and Omaha throughout the week. So each night at 9 o'clock, it'll be quite a lineup considering uh, the stakes involved. There's definitely players here that play those stakes, so I think we'll be seeing some exciting action. And uh, I just want to give a shout out though to Cart Casino before we uh, head off because uh, this is my first time here and I'm rather impressed with the amount of space, with the amount of uh, accommodations uh, that they have here. And uh, yeah, I think it's a, a good home uh, for, the, uh, for the Norwegian Championships, even if it's a temporary home, that's yet to be determined. But uh, at least uh, for this year, it's, it's a good home. And uh, thank you very much to uh, Cart Casino for, uh, for hosting. And thank you too both for joining us and we're looking forward to listen to your commentating on Norwegian players and your pronunciation of Norwegian <laughs> names. I'm really looking forward to that. Well, all uh, can you also follow us on Poker NM on YouTube. You can see it live with Norsk commentators. You can see uh, med Jason and Phil as uh, English commentators. And you can also see Northmasters and Cash Game all on Poker NM on YouTube.